Okay, so uh, let me start by showing you this one powerful slide here, which I believe summarizes the technological growth and adva advancements that happened over the past centuries. But what's even more compelling about this slide, if you try to notice the hockey stick, is the exponential growth that happened only a, a few decades ago with the invention of transistors, the birth of Moore's Law, to the successful communication between a client on, and a server of Sir Tim Berners-Lee, which marked the information age, and the revolution of the World Wide Web, and the rest was history. We even have a more powerful computational uh, device and access to data now than what we had uh, with a space shuttle which landed on the moon almost 50 years ago. Given this and the technological transition that happened over the past decades, it is tremendously surprising and quite bothering to see the disparity of technology, particularly in developing economies like ours. That despite the amazing progress in science and technology, unfortunately, we are still experiencing problems ranging from lack of access to clean water, infrastructure that supports communication and data sharing, and a problem that our organization is trying to help address, people's lack of access to electricity and lighting. According to World Bank, there are about 780 million people who don't have access to clean water. 1.4 billion people are not connected to the power grid, 4 billion people without internet access and makes up the world's poor. And because of this, in my recent participation from a forum, I realized and I've started asking myself this question. Is technology really the key to solving the world's most pressing problems? It has almost been three centuries since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. This transition included uh, going from hand production methods to machines, new chemical manufacturing and iron production processes, the increasing use of steam power, the development of machine tools, and the rise of factory system, which paved the way for rapid development and the second industrial revolution, which enabled the third industrial revolution, and now we're coming to the fourth, exploiting massive resources which caused environmental catastrophe, disparity among economies until we finally admit to ourselves that technology is actually destroying this planet. But before we transform into a neolithite, as reference to Ned Ludd, if you're familiar with Ned Ludd, who smashed a two-stacking frame in Leicester, England in 1779, which led to the revolution of men against machine, let me also tell you that technology did several wonderful, amazing things. Technology that we could have never imagined or uh, achieved from megastructures, to men on the moon, improving our well-being from the increase in literacy to longer lifespan to declining mortality rate, not to mention logistics, the growing efficiency in the transportation, communication, and data access. This, this only tells us one thing. Technology is not the problem. Going back almost a decade ago, I was fortunate enough, enough to be part of a volunteer program in Laokai Province, North Vietnam. And there, how to get to Laokai province takes about eight hours by train, and then you have to go on foot two hours more, and then we had to traverse Mount Fansipan, which is the highest mountain in Indochina, to set up a camp which is going to be our dwelling for the next three weeks. And there I saw this very interesting piece of machinery here. I asked one of the villagers what the machine was for, and then I learned that the machine was for creating rice noodles. So being naturally curious, I spent some time and hang around the place and observed the, the people every single day. And I noticed that this piece of machinery here, made out of rudimentary materials, actually feeds the entire community of 50 households. This piece of machinery here, made out of recy recycled materials, bring about 25% productivity because people no longer need to travel to the nearest town to buy themselves rice noodles. They get 50% savings because people harvest and create their own rice noodles and yield more crops because there are more people in the village who can work day in and day out in the farm. 
So the unforeseen impact of simple machinery, simple innovations such as this one is truly inspiring. The role of technology clearly seen from my new things, changing the lives of a small community in rural Vietnam to the Egyptians awakening its people with a revolution that was created through social media. There is no doubt the power of technology is inevitable, yet I still find myself asking the same question. When I went home to the Philippines, I visited Sagada and I watched a weaver and I wondered how she does this intricate designs on a fabric using a, a wooden machine. As she pushed and pulled a wooden stick and matched it with her uh, foot on the pedal, colorful threads start popping up as a pattern of the fabric was formed. No matter how I concentrate, full sight, full consciousness, and uh, as she waved her arms and foot around, I still wasn't able to grasp how the fabric was made. It was just amazing. And then I went out and saw a wooden bicycle on the street being paraded by a native of the area, and then someone making a walistambo. And there, I realized that the Philippines has even more of this grassroots innovation. There, I started asking myself if the key could be creativity. Is technology uh, just one of the creative human expressions? Is creativity alone the key to solving the world's most pressing problems? And if so, where does creativity come from? The first time I read about this 14-year-old boy from Malawi, I was really inspired by him. He never went to school, only read books from a rundown library created by the missionaries, yet he was able to build a, a, a windmill enough to power up appliances using blue gum trees, bicycle parts, and metal uh, materials that are collected from the local scrapyard. Now, this is creativity. Creativity molded by experiences. And his was relevant and significant because the motivation to create was out of difficulties, hardships, and deprivation living in a small island or small village in rural Africa. And I believe it was the same creative process that I, I had experienced when I went up to the mountains, which inspired me to create salt lamps a lighting system that makes use of ocean water, salt water, as a way, as a medium to activate and power up LEDs, and even charge low-power mobile devices like your cell phones and smartphones. So this is a video clip that you can see on how a salt lamp works. And I was motivated and inspired to do this after learning the challenges of the people just to get kerosene for, to have light at night. But there is this one thing that I have observed and recently realized that creativity is just a product of something more profound. And this should be the center of how we do things. This should have more values than the awards, trophies, academic credentials, certificates that we have. This, should, this we should take advantage of because together with technology, it's scalable. And these are human values. Human values are the biggest motivation to move forward. It brings everything together. It's the most compelling drive for people to attain altruistic goals. And with technology, it's going to be the greatest tool to change the world for the better. When I met a founder uh, of an NGO from Bangladesh, it occurred to me how human values are the key to solving the world's most pressing problems. Her stories were testimonials of this. The NGO she found is a value-based organization with a holistic approach uh, towards development. Because without providing the marginalized, the isolated communities with basic human needs, such as food, water, lighting, sanitation, you are not making them part of the system. We need to give these people self-respect. We need to give these people human dignity because only they can help themselves out of poverty. Only the community can be the guardians of the environment they live in. Addressing the problem right from the very core with something that has been innate and already within us is the most logical approach. And with technology, the movement will be even more intensified. So I'm going to leave you with a quote a principle and a matter of mine. Innovation is accelerating at an exponential rate, and we need to ensure that it is given direction with human values. 
Thank you for listening and may you have a wonderful afternoon.